Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this episode we are going to try to do a successful re-entry. I picked up that contract and uh, hopefully some other things. But I realized taking a look at it that I had forgotten to create the category for landing contracts. Even though we had the landing contracts from RP0 in here, uh, the category, the group, like flyby contracts, human contracts, milestones, had not been created. And so we're missing those right now. I tried to limit the tourism contracts and get rid of some, but it has not generated the landing contracts category. So I'm going to have to take a look at what's going on with that. So it's not asking us for a moon landing mission, which I sort of wanted to do. Uh, so yeah, that's a problem. I want science data from space around Earth. That's probably a good idea. Right now it says we have a max 3. I don't know why it's max 3, but okay. Uh, isn't it supposed to be max 2? We haven't upgraded this. Oh, I guess it's max 3 active contracts at the start. Okay. All right. So as far as other things, we are upgrading the tracking station and mission control, but that's not done yet. And yeah, as far as heat shields are concerned, we did... Un uh, we are... Research did we research survivability? Let me see. Uh, we need to finish up survivability. So we just need to warp through now because we definitely need heat shields. We're not going to be able to get away with that. So we're going to have the upgrades ready to go. And it is now 2001. Okay, so now we've got survivability and we're working on basic science there. I have added some pods, but I haven't priced them yet, so we we are holding off on that. That will be a new part pack that will have uh, some ISS parts, the Station Lab 2, Station Lab, Station Node, Station Supply Module, uh, the Lynx Neo spacecraft, and the Lynx S, which means small Neo spacecraft, and the Quest airlock. And also additional parts for the Lynx spacecraft. This is the non-pass-through version of the Lynx spacecraft and non-pass-through version of my ISS modules, but uh, yes, they need to be priced. They also do not belong in basic rocketry. So, yep, and I've uh, made generic names for these ISS modules because we don't want to associate them with the real ones that have uh, definite manufacturers. So they will be generic, as it were. And they do not have the internals that I, you might have seen in some of my other videos. So anyway, there is that. You know, why don't I just use the payload adapter as a recoverable unit? It's sort of shaped like one anyway. And we should get a heat shield that can cover a decent sized pod. Maybe just Soyuz one would be best. I haven't really priced the heat shields in particular. I don't actually know how much they ought to cost. <laughs> oh, and we have a maximum interstage adapter size of 1.5 meters, too. So we can't use this. I really should get tweak scale in for the payload adapter, but I guess for now we're going to have to adapt our CubeSat to this new role. And we will need a smaller heat shield. Let's say a 1 meter heat shield. And we want some parachutes. So we'll unlock those, I guess. Reshoot parachutes, and we can go into the action group menu to get them to be a smaller size. And we'll just do everything else normally. Okay, so we've got two of those. We're gonna get some of these thrusters up here so that we can control it. And we'll be using hydrazine for the thrusters. I don't see any reason to pack the nitrogen in this case. All right, that should do the trick. This shouldn't take too much delta V. Oh, it's actually pretty heavy. Let me see. 
195 tons. Uh, 195 kilograms, sorry. I'm gonna reduce the amount of hydrazine in the tank by changing the utilization. I think the parachutes are pretty heavy. We're gonna take some of what we've got in here out. We don't need the nitrogen RCS. And I think maybe I forgot to tell this that there are two parachutes. So, two parachutes used. It's a little bit of a weight savings. I'm gonna reduce the amount of blader. I think that's really probably too much. These are lunar rated heat shields. So, I don't know where the normal heat shields went. I think they require deadly reentry or something like that. So that's probably why we don't have them. Okay, so this is Delta R for reentry. And let me just fix staging and then we'll get it going and see what happens. Maybe we have to do the flyby orbits or impact missions a few more times before it gives us the lunar landing mission, I don't know. Okay, rolling out Delta R. Okay, well, we don't have to get into any particular orbit, do we? So SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and we have an ignition failure on one of the engines. Okay, well, Right, that happens. Recovering vessel. And replacing the engines. Oh, I accidentally did the build list instead of save edits. Whoops. Well, I guess we'll have an extra one. Okay, but we definitely want to finish up the 100% one and roll that out. We could cancel the other one, but we'll wait until this one succeeds. Alright, it's night time, but we'll go anyway. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. Now we've got two, and launch. Are we getting those data units? Because, boy, that was a lot of ignition failure. I mean, it's only supposed to be 1% right now. We got a couple of those out of the way quickly, didn't we? Test light has not so far killed an engine in flight, though. Here come the G-forces. Preparing RCS, separation, and ignition. And now fairings. Now we actually have time to apwaps this data down there, too. We had not had that before. Okay, I think it's safe to extend the antenna and solar panels. I'll even arm the parachutes. But we do have to get to greater than 6,500 meters per second, which we're not that far away from. Oh, well, I guess it does require orbit as well. Well, after we make orbit, I guess we can try and use the ether engine's extra ignition to... Well, ex one of its extra ignitions to deorbit here, if we've got some juice left. Ah, that's a little bit early. I'll use some RCS to do the rest here. Does it count that as orbit? Okay, it reached... Uh, it says reached orbital velocity, so that's fine. So now we just need to deorbit. We might as well deorbit closer, we have uh, target the KSC, though I don't know if the value of recovered vessels is based on that location. <laughs> we'll have to find out. So we'll try to bring it back as close as possible though. And that means deorbiting above Australia, as usual. Well, actually we're in so such a low orbit that probably that's going to undershoot. Okay. Normal. It's sort of floaty there. 
and use the right node. Okay, separation. Oop, oop, wrong way. Um, gonna have to sort of leverage itself off of that. There we go. All right, we are free of that and going to negative surface velocity. I don't really need these out. And I'll just leave the antenna open and let it break off. Oh, I guess we needed to do some scientific data. Hold on a sec. Mm. Gravity scan we've done. That's it. Uh, you know what? We can keep it. Yeah, we can keep it and recover it. That's going to be new. Keep. And here we go. First re-entry. Ah, uh, boy, this takes a long time. <laughs> we should have gone with a steeper entry, actually. Okay, we just lost the antenna. We have no more control over this, and the tank is overheating. Hmm, this sometimes happens with procedural tanks attached to the heat shields. And I don't know why, but... I think we'll survive it, maybe? Maybe. Oh, everything is overheating. <laughs> Still think we're gonna survive it. This is a lunar rated heat shield, folks. I didn't think it was gonna be this tenuous. We could have carried less hydrazine. Okay, we are through. Now it's up to the parachutes. Okay, we have two parachutes. They came out at slightly different times, but it looks okay. They seem to be sort of the same at the moment. I did click apply to symmetry counterparts. Okay, and we're down to 7 meters per second, which is fine. Where are we? Oh, it's so dark I can't tell. Well, I mean, we're pretty close to the west coast. We could sort of see the west coast there. There's Florida, so there's Mexico over here. So we're not too far away from the United States, though technically distance-wise fairly far away from the KSC. So I don't know how it's going to price this. Okay, um, no, don't sink. Uh, recover, normal recovery. <laughs> oh, it's sinking. No, no, normal recovery. Ah, uh, going normal. I don't have control. What? I, I think it stopped. No. Oh, it worked this time. Whew. This is why you catch it with a helicopter. Okay, we got 13.3 science. Uh, we fulfilled the science day from space around Earth contract. Uh, as far as the funds recovered, 828. It says we were 6,000 kilometers from the KSC, which sounds about right. But I still don't know for sure if it was measuring from the right location. So we got 71% back. Okay, so we filled those two contracts. Um, do I want to wait until we get general rocketry? Well, actually, we were unlocking basic science first. Which is just a way for us to get better... Well, we could get the science junior, which is sort of nice. Uh, but mainly it's so that we get on the road to solar panels. And general rocketry is a thing. Stability uh, will get us different payload fairings. Maybe a payload fairing size change? Hopefully. I don't know where that comes, actually. 
Uh, I don't know where we get better payload fairing sizes here yet. Um, and that's boat tail adapter. I guess we might as well... Do we want to save for the solar panels or just get stability here? Stability doesn't cost that much. We need the better solar panel for the solar panels for the interplanetary trips, and I'd like the early controllable core too. But we need to land on the moon first, and none of that will actually help that in particular. Okay, no, unless well, I mean even larger payload fairings. I don't think we need need those just yet. I wonder what enhanced survivability should have in it. Still no landing contracts. I'm gonna pick up... Oh, there's another... We did do successful re-entry, okay. Um, I don't understand this suborbital spaceflight one and why it requires first Karman crude. I might have to edit that, because why? <laughs> Why, why even have a suborbital space? Well, I mean, I guess there is that, but why would you require a suborbital space flight before doing a suborbital space flight? I don't know. And I thought I'd limited it to 12 tourism contracts, but now it's giving me 16 again. Okay, well, I'm not going to say no to the money. I'm going to take the flyby, impactor, orbit. So we'll get into orbit around the moon and fly by it, obviously, and impact it at the end. Let's just uh, proceed with that. And maybe I'll change up our rocket. I'm getting tired of these. Maybe some other engines. And I'll even change our probe. You know what? It is time to go away from CubeSats. Yep. We do have alternatives, folks. Uh, it might seem like looking at this list that we don't have a whole lot going on there. But in tanks, we have a few things here that uh, probably should be in probes, maybe, or pods. There's the Astro Rocket second stage, which has a command core in it already. And so it could be used as a probe itself. You just need to, it's got a direct antenna. It's got a pretty good range for its direct antenna, too. There's the Photon Interplanetary Stage, which has the same antenna range as well. And it's got built-in RCS, but not a built-in engine. So it could be used as a probe all on its own. The Skyrora Third Stage can also be used. So we're not... Uh, but as far as power is concerned, we need to worry about solar panel re This doesn't have a solar panel. And... I think this doesn't have one either. Oh, no, it does have the solar panel. So we'll go with this one. These two would have to have add-on solar panels. So the photon interplanetary stage is the best bet. It's pretty big, though. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's subassembly our Delta rocket. <laughs> what we call the Delta rocket. I might change it, though and create a new craft and now bring out the photon interplanetary stage I hope it's it is only has little tiny solar panels it might not be enough to transmit but as far as just command it doesn't take much power so it'll depend much battery. It's got plenty of electric charge. It won't need additional battery. And it's got a gap for any MMH and Mon3 engine. And I believe we have... Well, we'll just made a 100 Newton thruster? I don't know. We can tuck it in in a sec. Nah, I don't want a two hour burn time. This one is just hydrazine. That's less useful than I thought it might be. This one is too big for this purpose. 
we might just need to go with multiple 100 newton thrusters. Okay, well, I'll, let me unlock this one and see how big it is. It's, it's too big. <laughs> it is too big. Okay. Once we unlock the general rocketry, we would have other engines, but we don't have it right now. So, yeah, I'll get the one kill newton thruster and switch to hydrazine. I'm going to only have 9.8 mmh. We gotta cut it to a tenth of what it was before, 10.02. And then fill the rest with hydrazine. That doesn't give us enough delta V to do a whole lot. And it might not be enough, which would be our incentive to create a new rocket. Yeah, I don't think we can get into lunar orbit well, yeah, we can't transfer to the moon get into lunar orbit like this. So, we are going to change what we have. The other engine is a pretty good engine right now. We need overall a somewhat larger rocket though. We'll go with the max that we can make. At least in terms of our fairing size. Three ether engines. I want a central node to attach this to that isn't one of the procedural tanks. So that's why we're going like this. Maybe we should just make a more Skyrora like rocket. <laughs> or maybe we should move away from the uh, since now now the Reaver would make some sense. That's one option. It's not super efficient but it's marginally better than the Sky Force. Okay, yeah, let's unlock the Reaver. Of course, we don't have any data units on it yet. We could use a bunch of Skyrora... I mean, sorry, the Sky Forces. Uh, let's go with two Reavers. Well, that gives us a lot of thrust weight ratio. <laughs> That's a pretty low thrust to weight ratio, but the first stage actually gets us pretty far along the way already. So that might be good enough. Now this is a high pressure tank. We don't need that. Did we need, even need the high pressure tank for the Sky Force? I don't think so. I don't know why we have a high pressure tank here. Yeah, that's just extra mass that we didn't need. Whoops. Okay, that's a little bit better. Our rocket mass is more than twice what it was before. I don't want to call it Epsilon. I guess we'll call it the Echo Rocket. 2% chance of full burn failure, 2% chance of ignition failure. Rate of burn time I set at 4 minutes. So, okay. Okay, Echo. Not to be confused with the probe. Well, probe inflatable balloon of that name, I guess. All right, we are building our first echo. Oh, we can get rid of that delta. Stop warp. Oh, we do need to actually do some science. <laughs> yeah, the photon interplanetary stage does not actually come with any science. We need to put some on. Hey, there's the stock thermometer. And the stock barometer. And the goo container. Well, I'm going to keep this simple. I wonder how much power it will take to transmit, though. On the bright side, at least we can plan our approach to the moon now. So, I will use... Mechjeb's rendezvous info briefly to get a relative inclination to the moon now that we can target it. Nope, that's our geosynchronous satellite. And it looks like a daytime launch. Okay, they're all up. SAS is on. And ignition. Got two of them. And launch. I mean, we could still do this with the CubeSats, and it'd require less of a launcher. If 
But it's good to check out this photon interplanetary stage to see its usefulness in later contexts. Pretty high g-forces and still a fair amount of burn to go. Okay, preparing RCS. Separation. And ignition. Wow, we went out a little bit out of control there. And fairings. The antenna in the photon stage is always on. We are using some electric charge even though one of those tiny solar panels is facing the sun, so probably, hopefully we can rely on rely on it, and it doesn't look like it has uh, it says energy flow zero watts, I wonder why it doesn't say it's blocked, it says direct sunlight hmm uh oh, oh no, oh no, whoa whoa whoa, whoa. we lost an engine Oh no! Uh, F3 engines have multiple ignitions. Hold on. Um, that's a center engine. That's an outer. Let's shut that down. We only use the center engine. Maybe it can regain control. Doesn't say exactly what happened to it, but. Okay, we're only on one engine now. Let's pitch up. Maybe I should have tilted the two outer ones through the center of mass. That would hurt our delta V a little bit, but in case we lose one, it could be useful. The engines on the Saturn 1 upper stage, the six RL10s, were tilted that way. A little bit easier for them, though, because the oxygen tank was placed high in the stage, so most of the mass was pretty high. Comms are good because we have our geostationary satellite up there. I thought that was supposed to be over the Indian Ocean. It's not very geostationary. It's wandered over to the Atlantic Ocean now. We didn't really do that very accurately, huh? It's been like a year though, so but still. Looks like it needs some adjusting, but it's helping out here now, so probably shouldn't complain. Oh, stop going down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're in the atmosphere again. I don't want this. No! Oh, I underdid the pitch. We needed much more. Given the single engine. Hmm, this is not going to work out. Uh, there it goes. Okay, test light has managed to kill us. Log pressure data. <laughs> well, no, we, we've lost comms now too. It's doomed. And the priciest mission that we had to date. Figures. I think one thing I need to do is add CubeSat solar panels. I mean, we have those on the CubeSats already, but make them standalone as part of the small rockets pack. Seems like it might be a good idea. It survived re-entry. <laughs> it probably shouldn't have done that. I didn't realize the photon interplanetary stage was so resilient. I guess we might as well run it though. We've got comms and everything. Yeah, it's got a specific impulse of 180 and declining. At least we know it can ignite. But we're getting some data units on it. Very, very few data units. Alright, alright. So we've had a failure there. We will reassess and 
try something a bit different next time. Maybe tilting the ether engines will be the way to go. We'll see. But for now, I'll wrap up here and I need to take a look at those landing contracts and see if there's a way to get them to pop up and other things. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.